So moving forward, let's take up the next one that is question number 16. The function f be defined by fx equals 4 to the power x upon 4 to the power x plus 2. Pretty common function, right? Instead of 4, you can put here 9 and for 2, you can put here 3. For 4, you can put here a. For 2, you can put here root a and so on. So n number of such functions we have already seen while you are preparing for j. Now, time to start it fx is 4 to the power x upon 4 to the power x plus 2. So, f of x plus f of 1 minus x, it is 4 to the power x upon 4 to the power x plus 2 plus 4 to the power 1 minus x upon 4 to the power 1 minus x plus 2. This is the approach. In fact, this is equal to 1, the direct result you should remember. Now, when you just simplify, you get 4 to the power x upon 4 to the power x plus 2 plus this 4 to the power x goes to denominator. Here again, take LCM. You are getting 4 upon 4 plus 2 into 4 to the power x. Take two common from denominator, cut it, take LCM to get the result as 1. So, fx plus f of 1 minus x is 1. Now, what is when you move to 1 to 39? In the middle, you will get the value 20 by 40, that is half. This is clear. f half, either you can find directly as half or simply not required because the middle term f of 20 by 40, that would be cancelled with this term. What we are left with? f1 by 40 plus f39 by 40. fx, f1 minus x. f2 by 40, f38 by 40. So how many such combinations we are getting? 19. So what is the result for this question? It's simple. The result required is 19. So I'm sure this is clear. You can write it. 19.00. Moving on to the next one, that is question number 17. Let f be a differentiable function such that its derivative f dash is continuous and f pi is minus 6. If capital F, another function, 0 to pi to r is defined by capital F of x equals 0 to x small f t dt. And if this integral's value is 2, we have to find the value of f of 0. Let's try to understand too many equations given but not difficult to start. When you talk about this equation, differentiating, you will be getting f dash x is equal to fx. Correct? Now, similarly, when you take the second derivative, you will be getting f double dash x is f dash x. It is given f pi is minus 6. So when you put here pi, what you will be getting? f dash pi is equal to f pi is equal to minus 6. From here, f dash pi is equal to f of pi is minus 6. Why I'm going for pi? Because it is given and also my integral involves limit 0 to pi. When I go for f double dash pi, it will be f dash pi. Let's see how we can use it. Integral 0 to pi f dash x plus capital F of x cos x dx is 2. That means integral 0 to pi capital F double dash x cos x dx plus 0 to pi capital fx cos x dx this is equal to 2. So I'm sure this is clear. All right. Let's keep the second integral same and integrate the first one. So integrating by parts, you can say cos x into f dash x within the limit 0 to pi minus integral 0 to pi. Now, what we need? We need the derivative of this term, which is minus sine x into integral that is f dash x dx and the remaining term that is plus 0 to pi fx cos x 
dx this entire term is equal to 2 so i'm sure this is clear now applying limit to the first term 0 to pi when you put here pi this is f dash pi which is small f of pi that is minus 6 and cos pi is minus 1 so this is minus 1 into minus 6 then minus f dash 0 because cos 0 is 1 plus Next, integral 0 to pi sin x f dash x, apply by parts again. So, this is sin x into f of x 0 to pi minus integral cos x into f x dx. And what else? Remaining term 0 to pi capital F x cos x dx this is equal to 2. Now you can see that integral 0 to pi cos x fx dx is cancelled with this term. So these two are cancelled. Apply limit to the remaining one. We are getting 6 minus f dash 0 plus when you apply pi or 0 this will become 0. These two are cancelled. Everything is cancelled is equal to 2. So what is obtained as f dash 0? f dash 0 is 4. Now what the question is asking for? Find the value of small f 0, correct? Now clearly this is equal to small f 0. So the value obtained is 4 as required. So we need to write the result as 4.00. So I'm sure this question is also clear. Time to take up the last question of the second paper that is question number 18. Let the function f from 0 to pi to r be defined by this one. Suppose the function f has a local minimum at theta precisely when theta belongs to lambda 1 pi, lambda 2 pi up to lambda r pi where lambdas are between 0 and 1 then the value of lambda 1 plus lambda 2 and so on up to lambda r. We have to find the sum. Let us try this question. f of theta, if I try to simplify, I have two options. One, I can plan to put sin theta plus cos theta whole square as x and just get a quadratic in x. Option two, simplify in terms of sin and cos using the property. Let us say I am going to simplify directly. This is 1 plus sin 2 theta plus sin theta minus cos theta whole square to whole square. That means 1 minus sin 2 theta whole square. Simplifying you are getting 1 plus 1 that is 2 plus sin 2 theta minus 2 sin 2 theta that is minus sin 2 theta. Correct and additional term is sin square 2 theta. For maximum minima we need to differentiate. So f dash theta is minus 2 cos 2 theta plus 4 sin 2 theta into cos 2 theta that is cos 2 theta multiplied with minus 2 plus 4 sin 2 theta. When you equate it to 0 you are getting points which are critical that is that is 2 theta is pi by 2 3 pi by 2 that is all because it is lying in the interval 0 to 1. So everything would be lying in the interval 0 to pi only. So this is sufficient because when you go for theta, it will become pi by 4 and 3 pi by 4. From the other one, you are getting as sine 2 theta is half. That is 2 theta is pi by 6 or 5 pi by 6. So theta we are getting pi by 4, 3 pi by 4 pi by 12, 5 pi by 12. Now, we know that maximum minima if exists, these are alternatively and clearly when you go for the value pi by 12, which is the smallest one, correct? Now, when you look at the smallest value that is pi by 12, so you can see that this expression cos 2 theta is positive around this point pi by 12 and when you talk about this one, 
you can see that it is changing sign from negative to positive. When it is changing sign from negative to positive, so clearly there is a point of minima. So this is representing point of minima. Similarly, the next point would be this one which would represent the point of maxima, then again minima, then again maxima. Correct. So in this fashion, we can see that lambda 1 plus lambda 2 that is equal to 1 by 12 plus 5 by 12 or simply equal to 0 0.5. Correct. So it's time to go for the answer. Let's see what they are asking for. They are asking what is the value for lambda 1 plus lambda 2 up to lambda r. So yes, this is 0 0.50. I'm sure this question is clear. So this was about question number 18. That is the last question of J Advanced 2020 paper. All the best for your results. Thank you.